Remember Elijah was right there in the middle of the famine at that time and brought about redemption. He got rid of the prophets of Baal and rain came. Our, our duty is to get rid of the things that are standing in the way for God's blessing. Vision and betrayal are upon us. Upon us. What am I, am I saying both? Because the heavens are opened up and there is, there, there, there is a great prophetic revelation present. But there's also betrayal present. In Frederick Maryland, I prophesied, there is a snake hidden in the capital. God says, I will bring it out. And this exposure shall cause the nation to shake. But God said, the shaking is good for America. You're about to embark on a journey that you have never embarked upon before. And from the south of your land and throughout the middle of your country, from west and then back to south and east, north, they shall say, this has never, ever happened before in our country and in our culture. On Thursday night, March the 25th, I was awakened. Thursday morning, excuse me, awakened early. I heard the Spirit of the Lord beckoning me to pray. During the following hour, I received a vision that shook me. I caught a glimpse of a long table I knew it was in the White House. I saw a variety of clothing, uh, Western and Eastern, and I suddenly heard a voice saying, the hand of the betrayer is on the table. No, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Uh, this is not some cabal that was hatched in the dark of night. Uh, this is something that hides in plain sight. Uh, it's something we know about, but we can't connect the dots, or most people don't connect the dots. It's kind of a natural evolution when so much money and political control is at stake in the most powerful country in the world. This has evolved over time. And you call it the real power in the country? Correct. It is a hybrid of corporate America and the national security state. Everyone knows what uh, the military-industrial complex is since Eisenhower talked about it in his farewell address. We must car guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. Everyone knows Wall Street and its depredations. Everyone knows how corporate America acts. They're both about the same thing. They're both about money, sucking as much money out of the country as they can, and they're about control, corporate control and political control. It is the big story of our time. It is, I would say, the red thread that runs through the history of the last three decades. It's how we had deregulation, financialization of the economy, the Wall Street bust, the erosion of our civil liberties, and perpetual war. You write that the secret and unaccountable deep state floats freely above the gridlock between both ends of Pennsylvania Avenue is the paradox of American government in the 21st century. In both cases of the national security state and the corporate state, they are sucking money out of the economy. As our infrastructure collapses, uh, we have a tinker toy power grid that goes out every time there's inclement weather. Um, tens of millions of people are on food stamps. We incarcerate th more people than China, an authoritarian state with four times our population. Does anyone see the disparity between this extravagance for the deep state and the penury that is being forced on the rest of the country? That isn't a natural uh, evolution. Something made it happen. We're having uh, situation where the deep state is essentially out of control it's unconstrained and then God says highly embarrassing moments when another Snowden arises and people will become very afraid we have a person who's come forward with an affidavit inside of Dominion 
that has said that Dominion observed the 100,000 phony ballots that were brought in at 4 o'clock in the mm. morning on November 5th. Now, I talked about this in a previous video, but really quick, who is tied to Dominion Software? California Democrat Senator Dianne Feinstein's husband owns 60% of the company that owns Dominion Software. Who else? Dominion Software donated almost two and a half million dollars to the Clinton Foundation. Okay? Now finally, Nadim El Shami, Nancy Pelosi's former chief of staff. So these are some of the key players tied directly to Dominion Software. That appeared by every measure to be phony ballots since they were brought in the back door. They were not in the proper containers. They were sticking out of the paper bags and cardboard boxes. And they were told that these were ballots that were needed to catch up to Trump because Trump was too far ahead. When they were counted, they were all counted in favor of Biden. The woman who has uh, given us an affidavit, who worked for Dominion, said that and she saw not a single Trump vote. She was there for four or five hours. And it appeared to her to be horribly corrupt. And when she reported it, nothing was done about it. She was told it wasn't any of their business. So that's a that's that's not a whistleblower. That's sure. a witness on the record in our lawsuit in in uh, Michigan, which is why I feel pretty good about the lawsuit. There's a hundred thousand vote fraud. Do we have other witnesses for that that are somewhat reluctant to come forward right now? Yes. Uh, we can probably corroborate that three or four times. So I think they're finished on that. I think that's something that actually happened. They brought 100,000 votes in. They were all Biden votes. There was not even a vote for another Democrat. And it was intended because they were panicked because Trump was ahead by much more than they anticipated. The same thing happened in Pennsylvania. They never anticipated Trump being ahead by 800,000 votes. It's inherently impossible to make up 800,000 votes or 64% of the vote. You have to cheat to do it. Today's Democrat Party is held hostage by haters, absolute haters, left-wing haters, angry mobs, deep state radicals, and their fake news allies. left has been a destructive force aimed at the Trump administration and his 72 million supporters since even before the beginning of President Trump's term. When he said today, America first, it was not just the racial, I mean, the, I should say racial, the Hitlerian uh, background to it. There was an America first committee. They were infiltrated by the Nazis. Many of them were anti-Semitic, part of why they weren't alarmed by Hitler's rise in Germany. Outside of the Civil War, World War II, and including 9-11, this may be the most cataclysmic event the country's ever seen. But he's just disgusting to look at. Uh, he's obese. He's one of the repulsive, physically-looking human beings I've ever seen. Absolutely no morals. Who's a bully, who acts like a bigot and a racist, and is a sexist and a sexual harasser. The case for impeachment has never been stronger. The evidence never so riveting. Are you suggesting that President Trump should face impeachment? Another member of Congress wants him impeached. There's growing talk, at least, about impeachment. What is your case for impeachment? The first day of public testimony in the impeachment inquiry, opening with a bombshell. And we got the bombshell. A, a bombshell. A bombshell. Bombshell. One bombshell after another. Bombshell after bombshell. We're bracing for potentially an explosive opening statement. Explosive week. It's explosive testimony. Explosive. Truly explosive. The most explosive thing. This is a slow motion explosion. How explosive? Very explosive. And I think it will be explosive. Wow. Donald Trump feels the walls closing in. Really kind of the walls closing in on him. Walls closing in on him. Walls closing in on him. There is a non-trivial chance that if Donald Trump loses the election, he ends up living out the rest of his days in prison. But here's the question. Would you like to see President Trump in prison? Do you want to see the president in prison? Do you think Trump could end up going to jail? He could actually face jail time. Donald Trump could end up in jail. In prison. If he ends up in jail, so be it. You are pathetic. This president has radicalized so many more people than ISIS ever did. His ignorance could pose a profound danger to every single person in this country and literally every inhabitant of the planet Earth. <laughs> 
somebody rushed the stage, but was quickly disabused of going further by the Secret Service. It comes after that chaos in Chicago, violent clashes between protesters and supporters inside that auditorium. The event abruptly canceled. Hundreds of demonstrators outside, too. Two police officers injured, and tonight, Donald Trump taking no responsibility for any of it. As his hopes of a second term fade further away, a defiant Donald Trump is claiming without evidence that he's been the victim of electoral fraud. Unleashing a barrage of false claims of fraud and corruption. Tensions do remain high as President Trump repeats false claims that he won the presidential election. He's again claimed without any real evidence. With zero evidence to back up his claim that there is mass voter fraud going on. The President of the United States essentially alleging that there is a conspiracy to steal and rig the election uh, so that he loses. Again, there's no evidence to back up that claim. The president falsely suggesting Republican observers are not present at vote counting centers. A statement that was baseless and was not backed up by evidence. The unfounded allegations of voter fraud. He falsely thinks normal routine ballot counting is somehow rigged against him. The charge of electoral theft comes without evidence. And saying without evidence that Democrats are trying to take victory away from him. Some repeating his unsubstantiated claims of widespread voter fraud without providing evidence. Escalating his unsubstantiated claims it was stolen from him without presenting any evidence of widespread fraud. They're trying to steal an election. They're trying to rig an election and we can't let that happen. We were, we're watching uh, President Trump speaking live in the White House, and, and we have to interrupt here because the president has uh, made a number of uh, false statements, including the notion that there has been fraudulent voting. There has been no evidence of that. Still, when the president's press secretary made a new round of baseless claims, even Fox News cut away. Unless he has more details to back that up, I can't in good countenance continue showing you this. I don't know that we have seen the proof of voter fraud in any of these states yet. No evidence sorry, of voter excuse fraud, me, the compare, voter fraud in this the country. The Cooperative Congressional Research Report cited by the Washington Post points out that somewhere between two and five percent of I illegal can't, voters I can't. vote. We've cited so much evidence on stop, 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 or I'm going to have to cut this interview short. That is not based in the facts at all. This is disinformation and misinformation on a level that has not been seen from the presidential podium in the East Room of the White House in my lifetime. What President Trump just said was undemocratic and false. What about the Project Veritas tapes I that show that DNC groups alleged voter fraud are busing are, people uh, illegally from polling okay, place to polling place? Right there were a billion I'm going to stop cast. this right now. Uh, I'm not here to, to politically portray uh, or to lay out what's going to happen. I, all I'm telling you is what I saw, and I'm revealing to you that it's, it's, it's going to be devastating for a time. But you notice what he said in that prophecy, the Lord. He said, at this time, when this happens, a judgment will be made by the Supreme Justice in favor of the saints of the Most High God that they'll not only receive, but they will possess the kingdom. Uh, what it means is you'll possess the portion that is due to you at this time. That's what it means. So all these things work on a parallel so that you are, one thing is happening, sin, grace abounds more. S evil, good abounds more. All this stuff happening, war, peace abounds. God has got the exact opposite going now to, 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 to counter this. The betrayer is seated at the table of kings, celebrating with one thing in mind, to destroy God's people. That's what this is what this is all about. Forget America, forget about cultures and nationalities and politics and religion. It's basically to, to, to destroy God's people. That has been the desire for the enemy throughout history. Right from the beginning to destroy God's people. He hates God's people. He hates anything God created. And so his, his ultimate goal is to get to God's blood washed redeemed and to get to Israel, God's chosen people of, 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 the, of, the, of the Old Testament. He wants them to be destroyed, annihilated. You are not excluded. My dear blood-washed friend, you are not excluded. And so America is being focused on right now. Um, Israel is being focused. We know all that stuff. You can go to Jack Van Impey to hear all the, all the details and all the scriptures. I'm here to tell you about a vision. <clears throat> they have one thing in mind, destroy God's people. At the same table sits the deliverer. In other words, at the table that where this discussion is taking place, there is someone who who has the key to deliverance in this nation. I believe it's a future president. 
However, we are talking about betrayal. So the Lord spoke to me and told me to dedicate the next 18 months to a special time of fasting and prayer for the nation. Israel and the people of, of God, redeemed by His blood. Why? To preserve God's people. Listen to me. To preserve God's people. What did God send prophets to do? For preservation. And that's what He did. Why is this prophet at this time setting time aside for the next 18 months on a, on a partial fast, uh, abstaining from certain foods, going into my prayer closet for longer periods because there is something we are going to possess as the people of God and the hand of the betrayer will be revealed and hanged. Now, I believe that as Jeremiah and other prophets like, da like Daniel carried the burden for Israel or Judah in their day, so God reveals His secrets to His prophets for the purpose of prayer and protection from our enemies. God brought me to this great land, not for my own prosperity only and peace, but to be a covering for the presidents, leaders of the country, and the people of God. Prophets protect. No, I didn't only say this prophet. I said prophets protect. The prophetic word protects you.